Hey carnivores, welcome back. I got my hands on a rack of goat and I'm gonna make it in a really special way. Stick around, I'll show you how I do it. Hey carnivores, welcome back. Got something really special for us today. So this is a rack of goat and you really like my goat ribs video. You really like my rack of lamb videos. So let's combine them and make a rack of goat. This is different than making a rack of lamb though and it's different than making goat ribs. This is a very different meat than a rack of lamb, very different flavor profile, very different fat profile. So we're gonna treat it really differently even though it looks very close to the same. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started trimming the lamb. So you'll notice that just like ribs, these have a membrane on the back and we're gonna need to pull that membrane just like we do when we're making spare ribs. So I'm just gonna loosen it here with a knife against the bone and then I'm gonna use a paper towel to remove it. Okay, with the membrane removed, let's go ahead and French our rack of goat. Now I've got a little bit of a flap hanging here from where I removed some excess bone. That's not gonna be a problem. But we're gonna start Frenching and Frenching by the way, just means that we're gonna be removing some of the meat and fat from the tip of the bones. It's done because on, on racks of lamb and goat, etc., that really thin part of the meat ends up overcooking anyway, and so it makes for a much better presentation and you don't have any bad meat on. So we're gonna start by just cutting up to the bone as deep as we can go, straight across, and then I'm gonna remove any of this excess here. All right, and now I'm going to cut between the bones here and we're gonna remove the excess meat just down to that point where, uh, where we trimmed. Okay, so let's get this seasoned. If you've been here before, you know I always put salt first against the meat. By the way, if you haven't been here before, Eat More Vegans is all about meat. Uh, this is about grass and grain fed cows and goats and lamb and pigs that eat corn and chickens and they're all vegans and I show you how to cook and eat them. So if that's your kind of thing, hopefully you'll consider subscribing on YouTube, following us on Facebook, Instagram, however you wanna engage, love to have you here. So back to the salt. So we always put salt directly against the meat so that it has the opportunity to absorb into the meat because it's the one spice that will uh, as a dry ingredient. And it's gonna pull some of the moisture out, any of the excess moisture out of the meat. So we put this directly against meat or against fat if we've got exposed fat. We've got a little bit here underneath, so I'm gonna put some there. So let me show you the rest of what we're doing. So I got a holiday present. I got this from my friend Ron. If you guys saw the uh, lamb ribs video uh, or you saw the filet mignon uh, battle of prime versus Wagyu, you met Ron. And uh, Ron didn't like my chimichurri recipe for the beef ribs video. So he made homemade chimichurri, printed up this real nice, nice label, and that was his gift to me. And uh, I am very excited about it uh, because Ron is an expert on these things. And so we're gonna use this as a marinade and then again as a sauce. So all I'm gonna do is mix this up and then pour it out onto my lamb, or <laughs> pour it out onto my goat, so even I confuse those things. And then I'm gonna rub it all over the meat. I'm gonna get some under here. These flavors are going to absorb as a marinade, unlike the salt, which is going to absorb on its own. And one of the things I really like to do when I'm marinating is I like to do it in a vacuum. So I've got my uh, vacuum sealing machine here and we're gonna go ahead and throw this in a bag and seal it up. Okay, this is gonna sit overnight in the fridge. It's gonna absorb all of those wonderful spices that Ron put in to make his chimichurri better than mine. And then tomorrow I'll be back here and we're gonna get it on the grill. Of course, for me, it's gonna be overnight. For you, it's gonna be only a few seconds. Be right back. Hey 
Hey, welcome to the backyard. If you've been here before, you recognize Yoda, the Yoder Wise 1500 and BB-8 and uh, probably Darth, the uh, big green egg back here. Today we're gonna be smoking on Darth. Darth is running at 225 degrees, running Fogo Super Premium Hardwood Charcoal. And I actually put some hickory in there because I think hickory is gonna be a great flavor profile to go with this goat and the chimichurri. So this has been in the refrigerator for 24 hours. Now it's time to get it on the smoker. So let's open it up, see what we got here. Oh, can you guys smell that? Oh, you can't smell that, can you? You guys really gotta call YouTube and fix that. All right, so here's my rack, French. You can see that the spices have started to soak in. I got a little bit of color change here from the spices. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a temperature probe right into the side so I can keep track of the internal temperature. I'm gonna go right here into the thickest part of the meat. All right, so we're gonna get this on Darth and we're gonna smoke it a little bit farther than we usually do. So with goat, it can be a little bit tough and the goat fat renders at a little bit higher temperature. So we're gonna take it to 135 degrees and then we're gonna sear it to 145. We'll serve it at 145, which is roughly medium for beef, but it's gonna be about medium rare for goat. So let's get this on the grill. Okay, the goat is on, it's taking on smoke, it's cooking. We're not gonna to touch it until that goat gets to 135 degrees. It's gonna take about an hour for me. It'll only be a couple of seconds for you. I'll be right back. Hey guys, it took an hour and 20 minutes, but we're at 135 degrees and now it's time to sear. Today I'm gonna to be searing with the sous vide gun from Grow Blazer. You've probably seen me use this before if you've been here on the channel. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I, uh, I did a review of it. I'll put right up here. Uh, but let's go ahead and open up Darth. I'm gonna pull the temperature probe out and take the probe off of the grate so that we don't uh, keep the temperature of the grill down anymore and then we're gonna sear. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you sear. I'll see you back in the kitchen. Okay, welcome back to the kitchen. Uh, if you've been here before, you remember Leah, my nine-year-old uh, food critic who often likes my food. Uh, and if you saw our thousand subscriber celebration, you also met my friend Mark. And uh, Mark helped us celebrate that, and now he's gonna help us celebrate. Hopefully, this is good, I haven't tasted it yet. And I always like your food. So, so far, fingers crossed. Okay, so here we go, Leah. These are goat chops from a rack of goat. Goat. That's awesome. Yeah. So you've never had these before, but you've had goat ribs before and you really like the goat ribs. I don't think you were there when I made goat ribs, right? I didn't get the invite. And you've had rack of lamb and you like the rack of lamb and you didn't get that either. But I have had your lamb. That's true. So let's uh, let's give these a shot. Okay. Wait, can I say something else? Yes. Um, it looks like the more further down you go, the pinker it gets. That's right. It looks like we got a little bit more well done on one end and on the other end and medium rare in the middle, right? So we might see a difference between these. I still think I want this pink. You want to go for that one? All right, Mark, which one are you going to take? I want to try the end. Oh, you're going to go, there you go. That's smart. And yeah, uh, uh, you guys, let's pick one in the middle. This one's for you guys. You enjoy this. And uh, I'll go for this one. All right, are we ready? Cheers. 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 Mm. That's pretty good, right? MTY, buddy. All right, before we give the final, this is a chimichurri sauce that I used as a marinade. It was a holiday gift from my friend Ron, who lives in Greensboro, right? So give it a quick dip. There you go. Save some. Go ahead and dip it. 
But what is, what is, like, what's the flavor? So it's cilantro. You remember those beef ribs that I did? Asado style, Argentinian? Mm. That's the style. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, that's a winner. Ron, thank you so much for the chimichurri. Okay? I think so, it tastes, like, it has a ton of flavor. Good. Even without the chimichurri. And even without the chimichurri. Okay, real quick. MTY, moist. Definitely, Definitely kept moist. Tender? It's a little chewy, right? Like goat would be, but it's yeah. still really tender for goat. So maybe four stars and yummy. Mm -hmm. I, all right, I think we have an answer. We got mouths full. Six stars. All right, six stars. So you heard it here, moist, tender, yummy. You guys should really try this. If you can get your hands on a rack of goat, I think this is a great way to do it, especially yep. if you can make chimichurri. I know Ron didn't like my chimichurri from the Asado beef ribs, but it's a good recipe. You can try it. Just don't tell Ron I told you that it was okay. <laughs> so if you like this video, uh, I'm gonna put another one right here. This is where I made goat ribs. And then uh, just so you can get the chimichurri, down, uh, down there I'm gonna put uh, a link to the Asado beef ribs. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week on Eat, Eat More, More Vegans. Vegans.